Hello everybody, today we are looking at Split, the latest movie from the master of suspense, M. Night Shyamalan. And if you don't believe he's the master of suspense, just ask him, he'll tell you. And starring James McAvoy, 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 and... Um... Uh, I had it. Uh, hang on. Uh, what was the name? It was, oh, that's right. Anya Taylor-Joy. What? What did you think I was going to say? So, ladies and gentlemen, don't look now, but, um... I think M. Night Shyamalan actually made a good movie. I know, I'm surprised too. I still can't believe I'm saying that, but the more I think about it, the more I keep arriving at the same conclusion, which is, yeah, he made a good movie. Split is a good movie. And I enjoyed it. And if that's not a sign of the apocalypse, I'm not sure what is. So this movie is about a man with 23 different personalities who kidnaps three teenage girls for reasons which are initially unclear, although they're probably bad because there aren't many good reasons for kidnapping three teenage girls. And as the girls experienced more and more of his various personalities and more details come out about just what exactly he intends to do with them, they soon realize they need to find a way to escape before shit gets real. And again, it's good. Still can't believe that, but it is. It's good. It's probably the first good movie he's done since Unbreakable, really. And for the first time in well over a decade, he's actually living up to his Master of Suspense moniker. Although, maybe Master is pushing it, but he is at least an experienced practitioner. We'll put it that way. But, you know, experienced practitioner in the art of suspenseful storytelling doesn't really roll off the tongue, so... What can you do? As you might expect, this movie relies pretty heavily on the performance, or should I say performances, of James McAvoy, and James McAvoy, and James McAvoy, you get it. But yeah, he is really good in this. I'm still not quite sure why the movie went so far out of its way to keep reminding us that he had 23 different personalities when we don't see most of them. I think we only see like nine, of the 23, maybe, and for most of the movie it's just the same three or four, but what we do see, he does very well. There's this creepy neat freak with OCD and a thing for teenage girls, which is more than a little unsettling. There's the sinister matron who assures the girls, don't worry, the creepy dude is not allowed to touch you, while also hinting that they're eventually going to die. But I think the real standout is Hedwig, the nine-year-old boy. And this character and this performance could have easily tanked the entire movie. It would have been so easy for this to fail so hard. But somehow they made it work. His character is legitimately adorable at times, and there are some very funny moments with him as well. And I mean intentionally funny this time, not accidentally funny like some of Shyamalan's previous work. He has this thing where he keeps using the word etc over and over again, and it's kind of in the style of a child that's just learned a new word and keeps overusing it because he doesn't fully understand what it means. And it is totally adorable. And you have to keep reminding yourself that somewhere in this guy's head is also the personality that kidnapped these three girls and at some point plans to do unspeakable things to them. So it's creepy and adorable at the same time. It's adora creepy? No. Creep horrible. No, that's even worse. Someone come up with a word for that. The story kind of splits its time between Kevin, who is kind of the base personality, or the prime personality, if you will, of James McAvoy's character, 
and one of the three girls, Casey, who's played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who is a bit of a social outcast for reasons that become clear as the movie goes on. Without giving too much away, there's a reveal about halfway through the movie involving Casey's past that is quite disturbing even considering all the shit that the girls have been to up to that point with the kidnapping and whatnot. And it does explain why she seems to handle the situation much better than the other two girls, cause they've led pretty nice, comfortable lives. She has seen some shit. I don't think I've seen a movie with Miss Taylor Joy before, but I really liked her in this, so I hope we see a lot more of her. We also have Betty Buckley, who plays the psychiatrist that is treating Dennis slash Kevin slash Patricia slash Hedwig, etc. And while I was watching the movie, I couldn't help but think she looked familiar, but I couldn't quite place her. And I finally realized, holy shit, it's the crazy lady from The Happening that chewed out Marky Mark for I and her lemon drink. Thankfully, her character in this movie is nowhere near as silly. She's much better, and her performance is actually quite good. And through her sessions with Kevin, slash Dennis, slash Patricia, slash, you know, they explore some pretty interesting ideas with people who have multiple personalities, and I honestly have no idea if any of it is scientifically or medically sound, or if it's just, you know, made-up movie magic, but it makes for an interesting story, if nothing else. And Shyamalan himself is also in the movie, but don't worry, it's just a cameo. It's nothing like Lady in the Water. He's in, he's out, that's it. Thank God. And if you're wondering, yes, the movie does have the M. Night Shyamalan twist ending, although it's very different from any other kind of twist he's done before. And that's as much as I'm going to say, and don't any of you fuckers spoil it, because you need to go in this movie not knowing the ending, cause holy shit, it works so much better if you don't know. And if it means Shyamalan is trying to do what I think he's trying to do, ooh, that's gonna get interesting. And it means I'm actually looking forward to what Shyamalan is doing in the future. How did we get here? So yeah, if you haven't seen it, I honestly think you should. It's really well done, and I still can't believe it, but it's true. It's, at the very least, it's worth a matinee. It really is. I'm not trolling you here. I'm serious. It's a good movie. And that's about all I got to say about Split, so till next time, take care.